Hello everyone, back to tuning into today's Spur video. Going to have a look at the weather for today's 14 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to the uh, 28th of September and we'll be able to extend up beyond that. We are said GFS and ETM on doubles. Maybe run throughout a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us well into the first half of October. I should get to that for you in a moment. Just save that first video release day was our 6am UK weather forecast. And we'll also release a verification for the summer for forecast as well. How did we do with gas when we saw the forecast? Have a look at verification and find out. But uh, without letting too many cats out of the bag, I think we did all right, actually. I think, <laughs> I think the sort of forecast went okay. But have a look at it and uh, see what you think. Thanks so much, everybody, for doing that. Please like, share, subscribe. All back good stuff on today's videos and content. And thank you so very much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I've got a new range of merch that's been released today. A new collection. The gas is Lightning Collection has been released. So check this out. This is our latest uh, mug. Gasworthy's Lightning Mug. Wow, wow, wow. The Gasworthy's logo with lightning wrapping around it. Good gracious me. Looks, looks good, doesn't it? We've also got a t-shirt that we've released with the Gasworthy's uh, Lightning logo on it. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much to change your night shape. Good deciding this. We've got various shades as well to go with uh, that. So epic, epic, epic. And we've also got a pillow as well featuring uh, the Gasworthy's Lightning logo. So the pillow comes in various shades, green and uh, uh, black and dark navy. I think this would have been Mrs. P's favourite. She liked purple. You know, she liked purple. So uh, I think that's the one, <laughs> that's the one she'd have uh, wanted. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for changing my chat. A designer for uh, designing um, that Gav Weatherford's Lightning. Goodness gracious me. If you would like to have a look at that and all of uh, our other merch options and possibilities, we've got hats. We've got uh, we've got other mugs. We've got the magic water bottle. We've got um, we've got stickers, glasses, you name it. We've got it. T-shirts. Uh, if you'd like to have a look, then come to our spring store. The link is in the description with this uh, video. You can get fifteen percent off uh, your order, your first order anyway, uh, if you use the code CMD zero seven two one. Just use that code when you check out. And that will get you 15% off uh, your order. So, well, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, everybody, who has uh, supported merch. The mug is cool as well. Look at this. We've got the do it, do it, do it mug. Um, <laughs> I love that. I love the do it, do it mug. And, um, of course, that, that could go with your do it hat. So, uh, do it mug, do it hat. Um, <laughs> do it. Go, go, go and buy some merch. Do it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for the support that you have given uh, for uh, for Gaz Webby's work since we launched it um, uh, a week or so ago. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, it's going to be the last uh, collection for a little while. We will be bringing new merch on stream towards the end of October into November. And there, I can tell you, there is a Christmas jumper that is in the works. Gaz Webby's Christmas jumper <laughs> is in the works. More about that when we get a bit closer to Christmas. Okay, thank you so much. So let's crack on with the video, Ben. We're going to start off in the Tropic Atlantic. We've got Hurricane Nigel here. Uh, giving maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of 984 millibars. Nigel is moving northwestwards at 12 miles per hour. Clicking on Nigel, we can see that this is going to become a major hurricane. I'll look at wind gusts in a moment. Current position of category one at the moment. Hurricane Rise is just here. Going to power up quite a bit over the next couple of days. And uh, they're moving out into the uh, cooler waters of the North Atlantic as we get through the end week and weekend to west of Ireland as a post tropical storm, an area of low pressure by the time we get through to 2 a.m. on Saturday, if the forecast is correct. So if we go to discussion. We can see that uh, Nigel is going to be a Category 3 hurricane, giving maximum sustained winds at its strongest of 120 miles per hour. So uh, quite a significant, uh, you know, quite a significant major hurricane there. Another one to add to the list of major hurricanes that we've had over this season. We'll keep you updated about Nigel, of course you will.
Sexual temperature uh, is currently sitting at 18.8, but it's only coming down very, very, very slowly, this, isn't it? 18.8, uh, that is 5.2 degrees above 61 to 90, 90 average. Uh, that's provisional to yesterday to the 17th of September. Is that going to stay on the 17th? Remember, the warmest September on record is 16.9 uh, um, from 2006. Now, is that um, going to be beaten this year? I think the odds are increasing that we might beat that. We might we might keep the CT in the 17th. And that would mean that we actually have the warmest month of the year in September. Remember, we had June as the warmest month so far at 17.0. So if we get 17.1 or more for this September... Uh, but it's game on, you know, it's game on for September to be the warmest month of the year. I don't know if that's ever happened, um, to be honest, but I suspect it probably has at some point or another. But um, very, very unusual for that to happen. And obviously, um, you know, this, this, could be a, this could be a record break in September if we come out uh, above 16.9 and keep that CT in the 17th. And given how slowly this is only coming down... Um, I think the odds are increasing, but we, we might be able to do this. So we'll keep you updated on that. Obviously, we will. These were GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks on London today. Break line is the first year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off still a little bit above average today. It was a lively old night last night as well, wasn't it? So that merch being released with the lightning, you know, that's, top <laughs> that's topical, isn't it, after those... Venusaur blew up. Very unexpected. Complete model fail, really, uh, with both stalls that affected much of the south and uh, the southeast of the east last night. I had I had some um, rumbles. I had, I had a little bit of banging in the night last night um, here at the towers. So uh, yeah, <laughs> quite quite surprising. Um, anyway, so uh, that's on its way out now. That warm air and humidity we're getting cooler through the next few days. So this will bring the CT down. I, I it will tumble under the 18s. I I don't think we're going to get an 18 Celsius C to September, but how amazing would that be if we did? But I don't think we will. I think the cooler days got coming up will take take us down into 17. But you'll notice as we go to the last uh, days of September, we rise up again with the uh, upper air temperatures. So um, that's why I'm just starting to think that the odds are increasing. We might keep that C T in the 17s, actually. As uh, we uh, go through to the end of September. As we get to the beginning of October, also looking relatively warm then with the upper air temperatures. Well, having said that, there is a lot of scatter. So we've got cooler ensemble members down here, we've got warmer ensemble members up here. So quite a bit of uncertainty, I think, when we get through to the beginning of October. But it does look as though we are going to get. Uh, another warm-up for the closing days of September. Precipitation-wise, uh, I've got uh, precipitation comes. So, of course, we've got today's culvert pushing through, taking those uh, uh, thunderstorms and uh, humidity away, but also bringing rain. Then uh, we have some heavy rain around the middle part of the week as well. could be very wet uh, on Wednesday. Much of England and Wales after that, looking rather showery through to the weekend. There's a bit of a drying trend though, in the closing days of September. So as it becomes um, as it becomes warmer in the closing days, it also becomes a little bit drier uh, as well. Heading through to the start of October, also looking relatively dry then uh, as well. So high pressure looks like it's coming back. Temperature normally is from the 18th, 26th September, coming out above average, especially so for England, Wales. Precipitation anomaly is from the 18th, 26th September. They're coming out west of the norm, particularly for western, northwestern areas, and also in the south and the southeast as well. The latest wind from that from Earth, Nordschool.net, shows that the big area of low pressure in the North Atlantic is sending the cold front through across the country and behind that, we're opening the door to proper autumnal-type weather for this week. It may not last beyond this week. We may be back to uh, late summer conditions again next week, but for this week, it is autumnal with low pressure dominating from the Atlantic. And that takes us very nicely into the chart data. So this is the latest UK Met Euro run um, for midnight on Thursday. Low pressure north of Scotland and uh, looking unsettled there. There is a weather front that's going to be very slow moving um, across England and Wales on Wednesday. That's only gradually clearing away as we get through into Thursday. Then we need to cool showery weather, really, 
for Friday before a race tries to build uh, over the weekend. Nothing much comes of that as this deep air of low pressure containment remains of Hurricane Nigel then starts sweeping in from off the Atlantic. So that's bringing an increase in temperature for the weekend, but also some more wet and windy weather, especially so to the north and the west. That's so look as we get to the end of the UK, make your run to midnight next Monday. Deep low pressure contain, r r containing the remains of Nigel to the north and west of Scotland, looking wet and windy, but also quite mild, particularly so down in the south. This is how uh, I can't look. So again, that low pressure part to the northwest of Scotland on Thursday. Um, and we keep the trough of low pressure close to the country through to the end of the week as well. An attempt to a ridge into the weekend, but the next lows in the Atlantic with the remains of Nigel pushing in, being wet and windy weather through the second half of the next weekend. And that gets us up to midday next Monday with Icon. It's a mild wind for us, southwesterly, so uh, no problem with temperature, but there will be further rain, particularly in the north and in the northwest. The GFS midnight run, once more, with that low pressure dominating weather on Thursday, being showers and or longer spells rain through to the end of the week. In comes this low from off the Atlantic, again, got the remains of Nigel tied in with that. Uh, heading through to the beginning of next week, that's when we start getting a change to a higher pressure, beginning to ridge up uh, from the south as uh, Nigel remains of, heads off in towards Norway. And uh, as we move toward day 10, well, a high pressure then taking over, really, with the GFS midnight run. So we're back to uh, warmer, drier weather once more by the uh, by day 10, which is Thursday. 28th of September, high pressure sitting both to our south and the east. That high pressure rain carries on, dominating through to month's end and still in control into the beginning of October. As you go through the first week of October, you do start to push some lower pressure back through um, across the country, though. So that begins to spread some uh, cooler and wetter windy weather back in the first week of October. The GFS 6 z run. Uh, once more, with that low pressure to the northwest of Scotland on Thursday, being showers on the rain, that carries on into Friday, then into the weekend, low pressures heading in from the Atlantic, they'll be bringing wet and windy weather with them, particularly again, to more northern and western areas, then the high pressure starts building to our south once more. So as we move up toward day 10, we have high pressure taking over across the country, returning us back to dry and warmer weather. A large, big area of high pressure in control just beyond day 10. That's right between 9th of September, 1,035 millibars. Uh, and that just sticks around, really, as we go through into the opening days of October. We also start to pull the wind back into southerly southeast. So that could be a very warm start. To October, right at the very end of the GFS, 6 Z rose up, pushing lower pressure back through from off the Atlantic back to cooler and more unsettled conditions. That's the 4th of October. Long, long, long way out. If you enjoyed the video, please do you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Drop a comment, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web as you thank you so much, everybody, um, for doing that for, for, for us. Thank you so much. 40 subscribers, 4 0 gets us to 16.9k. Uh, please give us a sub. And we thank you so much, everyone. Okay, GM, uh, again, with that low pressure north of Scotland, that's been wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic into relatively cool, showy weather at the end of the week. And then this deep blow containing the remains of Nigel sweeping in from off the Atlantic later on uh, next weekend. Heading up towards day 10, high pressure increasingly takes over. Over and to the east of the country, bringing the wind up from a very warm and or hot southerly direction, which plus 15 cells isotherm is through to the south there yet again by day 10, which is the 28th of September. That could get the, weather, the temperature back to maybe below, possibly even mid-20s Celsius. Wow, wow, wow. And then ECM at WF looks like this. So once more, uh, we've got low pressure part to the north and the west of Scotland through the end of the week. Over the weekend, a slight little ridge start to build up on the southwest. That turns things a bit drier in the south, south east, but looking wet and windy out to the north and the west. With this low containing the remains of Hurricane Nigel. Moving on into next week, high pressure increasingly building across western parts of Europe. So by days 9 and 10, we're back under a large area of high pressure once more, bring wind back in from that east southeast direction and looking warm with the upper air temperatures plus 15 Celsius iceberg is returning again 
to uh, the south, so a def no, definitely signals for a warmer and drier anticyclonic end to September, which might continue into October, and that might lock us in to the warmest September on CT record. Remember, the section temperature goes all the way back to 1659. This is my precipitation forecast based on the East End run from Tometio.com. Further showery rain to come over the next few days. Very wet around the middle part of the week for England and Wales. A real deluge to come potentially for some places on Wednesday through to Thursday. That rain only very, very slowly clearing away from the southeast corner as well on Thursday, leaving us with further showers into the second half of the week. But over the weekend, things go a little bit drier for a day or so. And then more wet windy weather with the remains of Nigel coming in later on uh, next weekend. But into next week, the trend is a dry one, especially so more southern areas. So, um, yeah, looking pretty dry by the time we get three days, eight, nine, and ten. These are the options on the table within the ECM on sort of day four, day ten. Gets us to the 28th of September. 24 members of the ECM on ensembles with high pressure just to our east, low pressure out to west, mostly dry and warm at day 10. That makes good control and the operational run. We've got 14 with high pressure dominating to our south and south. Big against the low pressure out in the Atlantic. That should be mostly dry, quite warm too. And then we've got 13 with low pressure in off the Atlantic. That will bring showers or longer spells of rain. If we put the 24 there to get with 14 there, but um, the trend clearly is to high pressure returning and becoming drier and warmer again at the end of September there. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets to the 3rd of October. 14 members of the East Shem ensembles with a large air of high pressure slap bank over the top of the country. 13 with a trough of low pressure to our north. A little bit more unsettled with that one. 8 with high pressure. Still more or less in control, but beginning to weaken a little bit as low, lower pressure. So that's a build to our north and west. We've got 7 with high pressure ridging up from the southwest, being mostly dry weather then. 6 with high pressure dominating from Scandinavia. Winds coming in from the east, mostly dry with that. And 3 <laughs> with high pressure right over the top of the country. Once again, most of those options are the anti-cyclone. It's the opening days of October, so we work, could well be in for a warm and dry start to October. CFS beats you finally. These are 500 millibar high tonnage broke down into week periods. The first week period, text on the 18th, 24th of September. This week has low pressure in control, so it will be um, autumnal and quite wet. Week two is the 25th of September, 1st of October. Low pressure out to our northwest, higher pressure building to our south and south beach. That should be turning things drier. And warmer in the south. Probably still a little bit unsettled though. Further north. Week 3 <laughs> is going to be the 2nd to the 8th of October. High pressure is back in control. Sitting over to the east of the country. Bringing wind from the east or south. Beach. That should be a dry and warm start to October. Big change for week 4 though. This is the 9th to the 15th of October. So high pressure then going into retrograde. <laughs> retrograde uh, <laughs> and becoming centered around Greenland with low pressure setting up to our south. That will pull in both cooler northeast winds and turn things a lot wetter, especially so for more southern parts of the country. So after a warm and dry start to October, cool and wet by the middle of the month. That's four weeks away, though, so it's a very, very long way out. And uh, before then, lots more warm and dry weather to go, if the models are correct. We shall see. Okay, if you've enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to tell friends about Gaz Weathers and why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. 40 subscribers is all we need to get ourselves to 16.9k. So please give a sub, tell your friends and family to subscribe, tell your neighbour, tell your doctor, tell your vicar, tell your mother in law, maybe if you dare to uh, subscribe to our channel. We thank you so much, everybody, um, for. For, uh, for doing that. Right, okay, that's it then uh, for uh, this video, for today's content. Actually, tomorrow we're going to have a 6 a.m. forecast. We'll have the extended European outlook, and if all of that wasn't enough, there'll be a 10 14 day or two. So uh, keep checking back to the channel for, for more, for all of our content. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your uh, Monday. Don't forget to check out the merch. Thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Monday. That's all for now. Bye for now.